Hello and welcome to the new series called just called Nutrition. And um, for those who don't know, I have an advanced diploma in nutrition. Uh, so I thought we would start with vitamins, and I thought we'd do first do them in order, but first we'll do the A vitamin and the B group vitamin. There's quite a few B group vitamins, so we will do those. Okay, so what I want to do is um, give you a function of the vitamin, the recommended daily intake, that the average, when I say recommended daily intake, is for a healthy adult. So if you're elderly, if you're a child, if you're a teenager, if you have certain illnesses or diseases, you may need more of a vitamin certain vitamin or less of a certain vitamin. So I'll also give you um, drug interactions because some vitamin supplements can uh, interact with drugs very dangerously, so you need to know about the drug interactions. But this won't be a comprehensive list of drug interactions, so it's really important. If you're going to take a vitamin supplement, you talk to your doctor that it doesn't interact with any of the medication that you're currently on. I will also tell you which foods that they uh, that they have the highest amounts in, and which foods you should eat if you need more of that vitamin. And um, also, I will tell you about the symptoms if you have an excess of that vitamin in your body, or if you have a um, uh, um, or if you have a deficiency. If you have a deficiency of that vitamin in your body, so that would be that. Um, all right, so uh, you know, we're always told we to eat a wide variety of foods and because that's the best chance of getting most of our vitamins and our minerals. And I think this is really the best way. I'm not a big fan of supplements for some people who do need them, but it's best to get them in the food. So we we'll start with vitamin A. Well, um, vitamin A, in the case of vitamin A, is that it fortifies the immune system and it gives the body a better chance of fighting infection. It restores um, the cells, the muscles, the ligaments, the tendons after they've incurred damage. And there's been some finding in scientific research that it's protective against certain types of cancers. Um, the recommended daily intake of Vitamin A is 750 micrograms. Now, make sure that you, whenever I'm talking about um, vitamins or minerals, you've got to listen to whether I'm talking about milligrams, which is a, a figure, or micrograms, which is much smaller, or even IU international units, which is small, and, and there's grams. So you don't want to get those wrong. So for vitamin A, you need 750 micrograms a day. Um, the sources, the best food sources of vitamin A are yellow, orange and green fruits and vegetables and organ meats such as liver and kidney. And if you're deficient in vitamin A, uh, it can cause blindness um, and in the excess, if you have too much vitamin A in your body, it can cause cancer and fetal abnormalities. Now when it comes to interactions and warnings, um, zinc if you zinc deficiency, if you're deficient in zinc, that interferes with the metabolism of vitamin A. And vitamin A helps your body absorb iron as well, so if you need to absorb iron better than, than if you take it together, you're less likely to be anemic. Um, pe pregnant women should definitely not take vitamin A supplements, as too much vitamin A in pregnant women can lead to abnormalities in an unborn child. Okay, so let's move on to the B group vitamin. The so, and we'll start with um, obviously vitamin B1, also known as thiamine. And thiamine helps the body make use of carbohydrates so that they release energy. And um, and uh, also it's critical for the proper development and maintenance of your heart, your brain, your nervous system and your digestive system. Um, the recommended daily intake of vitamin B1 thiamine is one to four milligrams, one to four milligrams of 
and farming in ADL, and the sources of uh, farming are whole grain bread, cereals, Vegemite, and meat. Um, if you have a deficiency of vitamin, it can show in you have fatigue, you can be petulant, you can have muscle sensitivity, and you can have memory loss. Um, if you have an excess of vitamin, you can have um, irregular heart rhythms, seizures, and headaches. Uh, vitamin B1 or vitamin, as it's known, can be interfered with the effectiveness of chemotherapy drugs, antibiotics, antidepressants, diuretics, digoxin, which is a drug used to often treat heart disorders and scope for many of them. Often the drug prescribed for most of the So medical or seek medical advice before taking any time and supplements if you're on those drugs. Um, that now we'll move on to vitamin B2, also known as riboflavin. Riboflavin helps the nutrients in your body release energy. Um, you need 1.8 milligrams of riboflavin a day. It comes from bread, cereals, milk, milk products, Eggs and yeast extracts. Um, if you're deficient in riboflavin, you can um, it lowers the effectiveness of your immune system to fight off um, infections and diseases. Uh, if you have excess riboflavin, you know because your urine is a fluorescent color, you know bright, you know fluorescent. So you'll be able to see your urine in the dark if you have an excess riboflavin. Well, riboflavin should not Riboflavin supplements like vitamin B2 supplements should not be taken by children under 12 at all under any circumstances unless you know the doctor has a very specific reason to prescribe it. Um, people on anti-cancer medications and people on antibiotics or people with kidney failure should definitely not take supplements of riboflavin either. Okay, let's move on to vitamin B3. Or vitamin B3 can also be known as niacin. Niacin aids metabolism, it plays a role in the effectiveness of digestion and nervous system maintenance. It also has a great many other functions, and I'm bringing the hundreds in the body. Um, you need 18 milligrams of riboflavin a day. Um, this comes from lean meat, poultry, fish, especially tuna, peanuts, and yeast. If you're deficient in niacin, you can get Pellagra, which is a disease that has a lot of symptoms including indigestion, dermatitis, muscle placidity, diarrhea, the appearance of the swollen tongue and confusion. If you have excess of niacin in your body, um, you can get liver damage. Um, people who take medication for tuberculosis may be more deficient in niacin and may need to increase their niacin intake. Uh, women that take contraceptive pills that contain estrogen um, need more niacin often and people who are pregnant, breastfeeding or who have kidney failure should definitely not take niacin supplements and children under 12 should definitely not take niacin supplements. Okay, let's move on to vitamin B5 or not better known as pantothenic acid. No, sorry, not working at the moment. Pantothenic acid. Um, okay, the function of vitamin B5, pantothenic acid, um, is vital for the production of energy converted from fat, carbohydrates, and protein. It may have function of hemoglobin and the metabolism of toxic substance by the liver. You need 6 milligrams of um, B5 a day. You can get that from nuts, seeds, organ meat, avocados, pumpkins, sweet potato, eggs. Egg yolk, um, broccoli, dairy meat, bananas, fish, chicken, and whole grains. So you don't, it's very really unlikely to be deficient because there's a lot of things that have um, vitamin B5 in it. But if you are deficient, you'll be tired, you'll lack strength, you can get stomach pains, muscle pains, uh, lack of coordination, lack of sensation, nausea, sleepiness, depression, um, anemia. If you have too much B5, you can have diarrhea, nausea, indigestion, and it can cause liver damage. Um, people who are using contraceptives containing estrogen will most likely have um, a B6 deficiency, so it's very much have a deficiency in B5, so they might need to increase it. And these children under 12 should definitely not take any vitamin B5 supplements. Okay, now if we move on to vitamin B6, which is known as Pyridoxine. Um, you only need 2 milligrams of pyridoxine a day. 
and they go to the part of saying uh, program, programate, um, uh, spinach, green beans, bananas, wheat, carrot, egg, chicken, fish, um, cauliflower, sunflower seeds, walnuts, things like that. Um, if you have a deficiency in vitamin B6, you can get skin irritation, especially and spit sore lips, if the one swollen tongue, lack of coordination, diseases of the nervous system, confusion, and sleepiness. And if you have an excess of vitamin B6, this can lead to a lack of sensation, like you get lack of sensation in your hands and your feet a lot. Um, if you take the oral contraceptive, you can have lower levels of vitamin B6, so you might need more. Uh, pregnant women often have to make increase their intake of vitamin B6 as it helps in um, morning sickness. Um, people who are on medication to treat tuberculosis or Parkinson's disease can also be deficient in vitamin B6, so they may need to take more of it. The absorption of vitamin B6 is aided by vitamin B2 and magnesium, so if you're having trouble absorbing it, if you take B2 and magnesium with it, then that will help you absorb vitamin B6. Um, but, but vitamin B6 supplement should not be taken by children under 12. I have a problem with most children most of the time taking any sort of vitamin supplement under 12 unless it's really, really necessary and prescribed by a medical professional because really they should be able to get it out of their food. Okay, now let's talk about vitamin B7, which is also known as um, biotin, or it can also be known as vitamin H. Okay, the, fun the function of biotin is it aids in formation of fatty acids and the release of energy, and it supports healthy functioning of bone marrow and nerve tissue, of testes, sweat glands, and the blood cells. Um, you need only 30 to 100 micrograms um, a day, and you get that from organ meat yeast, egg yolks, mushrooms, peanuts, bananas and soy. If you're deficient in um, biotin, you can be very tired and you can have muscle soreness, you have loss of hair and depression. Um, there's no negative effect found if you have an excess. Um, low levels of glycine may be found in people with diabetes and those on anti-involvement medications, as well as people who use antibiotics for a long period of time. Okay, now let's move on to vitamin B9, also known as folic acid. Now, um, folic acid's function is vitamin the development of the fetal system and critical in maintaining normal brain function. You need about 500, sorry, 400 micrograms of folic acid a day. Um, you can get this from organ meats, leafy green vegetables, legumes, yeast, fortified cereals and citrus fruit. If you're deficient, um, you can be tired, you can have, have painful tongue, you can have osteoporosis, anemia, um, and you can have nervous system defects, especially in unborn children, such as spina bifida. It is also, um, a deficiency in cold acid has also been linked to bowel and cervical cancer. Um, if you have an excess in folic acid, you can have convulsions, skin irritation, insomnia, diarrhea, and nausea. It can also limit the effectiveness of zinc and estrogen within the body and as well as interfere with the actions of barbiturates and convulsants and the drugs used to treat ulcerative colitis, as well as rheumatoid arthritis, drug known as sulfasalazine. Um, pregnant women should use, well, this is available now, but they used to say pregnant women should increase their um, intake of folic acid, but my sister was told by her doctor that she didn't need to, but throughout my pregnancy I was told to take it. So, you know, now they're saying that, but most women I know have taken extra folic acid during their pregnancy. Um, folic acid can impede um, aspirin, ibuprofen, anticonvulsants, antibiotics, and malaria drugs, blood pressure and ulcer medication. So if you're on these medications, you need to check with your doctor whether it's okay to take folic acid or if you might need to increase the folic acid for some reason medication can decrease it. Okay, now let's go on to vitamin B12, also known as copper minor. Copper minor aids in the maintenance of nerve cells and blood cells, but also helps the creation of DNA and has a controlling function in areas of carbohydrates, amino acid, and fat metabolism. 
I'm going to need two micrograms, so you need to hit anyway. And I generally think all the meat, clams, oysters, sort of seafood, sort of stuff. Um, seafood too, not stuff. Um, if you have a deficiency in copper mine, you can have lots of sensation in your hands and feet, a lack of coordination, a loss of vision, megavasculinia, confusion, irritability, nerve damage, shakiness. If pregnant women are deficient in but deficient in vitamin B12, it can increase the risk of neural defects in our unborn children. Um, there's been no recorded negative reactions of um, the excess, we have an excess of problem in the system. Um, cholesterol medication and gastric acid inhibitors may increase your need for vitamin B12. Okay, well next time we come we'll talk about vitamin C, D and E. Okay, thank you for your time and I'll see you next time.